This is Saurav, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. Oh, he's hit that one too. That's a big six. That's a huge six out of the ground. Go fetch that one down the road. He has whacked that one over the top of square leg. It's hit the roof. It's gone bouncing down into the street. Welcome to episode number 146 on the 23rd of December 2019. The countdown gets more exciting as the celebration for 150 episodes gets nearer and nearer. Join me on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts for the 150th episode on the 1st of January at 6. PM live from the studios of Aditya Digital Network Ravindra Jadeja showed why is he the best spinning all-rounder in India eclipsing his own coach Ravi Shastri to make him the best spinning all-rounder of the last 25 years talking on the familiar rhetoric that once kohli was dismissed india's chances of securing that total of 316 was difficult but like the attitude a decade or two ago and the bowlers were not supposed to bat the attitude now is that all 11 people in the team should contribute with all the elements of the sport especially in cricket where one has batting bowling and fielding this is where the big difference lies in the teams who were playing in the mid 90s and the teams who are playing in the current setup i may not agree with this analogy but jadeja did exactly what ben stokes did in the final of the 50 over world cup when the best batters could not produce runs but here the difference was india was chasing over 300 runs and the openers set up the match to perfection making rohit and rahul the designated openers not only for 20 over world cup in 2020 but the 50 over world cup in 2023 was a match what one would call as a cliff hanger no team was in the pole position at any time despite west indies hitting over 120 runs in the last 10 overs the first 40 overs by the west indies were mediocre they totally messed up their batting order promoting individuals like rosson chase ahead of hetmeyer Puran and Pollard in contrast the Rohit Rahul combination was only matched by the Bedstow Roy combination in the World Cup now the real test starts with teams like South Africa Australia and Sri Lanka as opponents for the next 100 days it will be a litmus test for the team can they match up against the likes of Patrick Cummins, Mitchell Stark, Kagiso Rabada. How will a team like South Africa respond with major personnel changes as they put their former players in charge of the coaching staff in terms of Mark Boucher, Jack Callis and Graham Smith? Unlike football, coaching changes in cricket doesn't seem to make much of a difference. as coach is always a passive stakeholder the end of a decade and the start of a new decade 2020 could be just the year teams like sri lanka and south africa are looking for It wasn't surprising when teams like south africa went to their former players as coaches and managers because that was the best they could get out of them and it was a good employment strategy for these former players it will be interesting as to how former players influence the current setup and can they match the coaching acumen of ravi shastri on one side 
and Justin Langer on the other. When you make former players and captains who have been icons of their generation or have been made icons of their generation, it's not often easy for these players turned coaches to show the current setup how to go about it because the players who have been made coaches like Boucher, Callis, Smith also did not get off to a particularly handsome start when they started their career. Forget the legends of Smith, Callis or Boucher. It's never easy to understand how we create gods and icons out of ordinary individuals. Especially in sports, the shelf life of a player is at most 10 to 15 years and if you are lucky then like Tendulkar you may stretch up to over 25 years but that's an outlier. By design and default all the good players mostly go on to become coaches, managers and also a part of the administration and the average and the marginal players go on to take commentary stints because don't have the patience to nurture a new and a young player and being critical and harsh is their only virtue as we have heard the term birds of a feather flock together so these average players who go on to become commentators often find solace in praising their fellow average players whose contribution to the particular sport is of such diminishing quality that it's not even found in the sports archives and their contributions do not count up to any meaningful discussion. These players turn commentators who were average and mediocre in their own playing times take it upon themselves as a mission to compare the current generation to the past generation and obsess themselves with unnecessary statistics. The feeling of being envious is present in their tone when they see the contemporary players form at such high levels than these players turned commentators could ever do in their entire playing days. Former Australian player who played in an ancient generation finds himself doing what every envious person does, a foot in the mouth disease, to say something about somebody which can be embarrassing and insulting and to compare generations of two kinds which is not at all feasible. The obsession with a certain generation and the inability to accept another generation or the contemporary time is a flaw that seems to be growing daily like the land fills and this individual endures this flaw at the highest levels. This individual said was not only insulting to the current generation of players but a favoritism and an obsession and a fixation with a certain generation of players. This particular former player said that Tendulkar and Ganguly faced better ballers than Rohit Kohli and I quote, they Tendulkar Ganguly spent bulk of their time opening together against some of the best fast bowling combinations. Examples being Vasim Akram, Vakar Yunus, Ambrose, Walsh, Megra, Lee, Donald, Pollock, Malinga, Vas, and said that these bowlers a serious test of a batter's skill. I respect the names he took. Are we not going to move on from these individuals and respect the current generation of bowlers and batters? Can't we say that now each team has more than two bowlers each. For example, from India you have Shami, Ishant, Yadav, Bumrah. India has Patrick Cummins, Jai Richardson, Kane, Richardson, Stark, Hazelwood. South Africa has Ngidi, Rabada, many more. And by saying that 
the quality of those bowlers who have long retired from the respective sport and we still talk about them and we don't respect the current ones is nothing but a defeatist attitude it's like getting caught in this world pool unwilling to get out of this mentality that after the retirement of those individuals teams have not been able to produce and garner and nurture fast bowlers and spinners this kind of a mindset is not just limited to one field or one sport it's spreading like a viral fever and such an unsound attitude can damper the spirits of the current generation of sports players when they are time and again being compared to a generation gone by technology taking control of everything it's difficult to accept and praise the performances of sports players as one feels that technology often dilutes efforts put in by the current set of sports players therefore whoever this individual is and whatever he said it's best to disregard comments of individuals who are stuck in their own fancy world are unwilling to move on from certain individuals or certain passages of time often use this word skill and then reprogram it to include words like reskilling upskilling traditional skills the skills that are irrelevant redundant and the skills that are needed in contemporary times but do we as individuals understand what skill means or are we so hallucinated by technology that we cannot accept skills which used to exist a few decades ago before technology became a part of our daily existence and yes while it is important to reskill and upskill oneself it's also damaging to say that the skills that we have acquired over the years are redundant there is no proof of the same in sports academics skill differ from domain to domain and individual to individual more about common sense about understanding the situation and reacting accordingly and no amount of skill an individual has can upskill the common sense that an individual gains over the years being on digital media platforms for example doesn't require any kind of skill but it requires a lot of common sense what to say when to say how to say it and how to react to a situation is all about common sense but we being gullible as humans we react before we even think and this is where skills have no use but common sense despite our limited knowledge of using various digital media sites common sense will always triumph any kind of knowledge individual may have the skills and the knowledge but if they don't have the common sense when to use that or if they haven't garnered the experience and they know that it's a predictable situation then only your common sense and knowledge garnered over years and years of maturity and being wise can help you but your skills alone cannot help you in this situation one can take for example the many laws of physics for example the third law of newton which says that to each and every action there is an equal and opposite reaction even newton didn't need his brain to figure this out it was all common sense he understood this because he had experience of years and years and he came up with a very simple line which became iconic over the years but if we scrutinize this particular law deeply it's very very simple and straightforward and is full of 
common sense. Does an individual gain experience by doing the same thing again and again for a prolonged period of time and how do they do something over a prolonged period of time by not getting affected by other individuals ability to shame them and embarrass them and if we ignore individuals who make an effort to shame and embarrass us then we can have the experience to ignore such individuals gain experience and then become icons ourselves and this is what a sports person does it's about observation it's about what individuals expect from you and then we give it to them after a period of time even if that period of time is prolonged the best example is how to tackle trolls on social or digital media sites the best way is ignore them don't answer back answering back will not give you any kind of edge over the other individuals if we ignore bullies or trolls on these particular virtual sites these individuals will stop on their own but the moment we react we reply back they get fuel they get the fuel and they get the confidence the false sense of being that yes i am being given importance and the moment we give importance they understand that the more they instigate the third law of newton comes into effect and how do we avoid bullies and trolls we don't say or do anything on virtual or internet or these social media sites which will instigate a few individuals who are waiting for individuals to make a mistake this is where our common sense fails us if we know that we say something or we pronounce something about ourselves on these digital platforms which may or may not be liked by a few fringe groups who will by default and thanks to the third law of newton react widely and then we will feel bad and insulted why do we give them the fuel in the first place why is there a need to tell everyone everything at all points in time especially in the contemporary times where one takes these digital media sites as gospel please and trolls won't be a factor if we don't allow them to be a factor the moment we start saying things which instigates a few fringe groups then all our effort goes into the drain and this is where common sense comes into play if we have seen other individuals get trolled because they performed an action or wrote something on these social or digital media sites which instigated a few fringe groups then the common sense is for us to observe what happens and not say the same thing again what is the point of individuals arguing on these virtual sites when it has no meaning when one knows that you will be trolled you will be bullied and if you want to avoid this the best thing is not to give them the fuel but once despite our understanding our knowledge and our observation we give them the fuel then it's our fault then our common sense fails us and no skill we have will ever come to rescue us the thing we do in this world is predictable it has a pattern and that's why smart individuals who are able to decipher this pattern always rule the roost not because they are skilled but because they have the understanding they have observed these things over the years and they have the common sense to do the action when it is required another example is you are a skilled writer you know how to write but if you don't know what to write if an individual doesn't know what to write and write the things which do not instigate a certain group or a certain fringe setup then you are 
fooling yourself by having that effort of writing. The skill of writing will be meaningless if you do not bypass and avoid saying things which are going to be harmful to an individual if it's not perceived in the best way by a fringe group who are waiting for such petty mistakes. It's the same in academics. Studying is not about skill. It's about common sense. It's about understanding the pattern of questions which will be asked and what sort of questions have been asked before and what can be the subtle changes in the question which will come. It's never about one's knowledge alone but using that knowledge to great effect and this is where one's common sense comes into effect. This is Saurabh and you are listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. Thank you for listening to episode number 146 on the 23rd of December 2019. Stay tuned for the next episode. This is Saurabh and you are listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. Please send your valuable suggestions through your comments and audio recording to the email id aditya.writer at gmail.com. You can also like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and Facebook page and stay tuned for the next episode.